Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Now, today we are going to be taking apart these, uh, this ballast. Now, we already took one apart over here, and, um, basically, inside, I, I looked online, and the ballast apparently comes in all sorts of different forms. It was really confusing, so I decided just to rip one apart. Now, these came from old fluorescent lights that used to be in our workshop over here, and, um, we, and my dad decided to throw them out and get some LED ones, so, um, I took out the ballast of all of them. Now, these aren't probably easy to obtain by any means, but if you ever have some, um, they're actually quite useful, I'm thinking. So you can see here on the label, it says that it goes from 120 volts to 525. Um, but there's also a capacitor in here that I found, and I'm assuming the capacitor gets charged up and discharged at a high voltage, and that starts the arc through the tube. And then the 525 volts maintains a steady voltage. Now inside of here there's a few things. There's a very large um, transformer and then a choke. And uh, the choke is set up in three different coils and this basically limits the current so the amount of ampers that can flow. Because if you have too many ampers then your arc becomes too hot and the, the glass tubes will melt and break and your fluorescent lights won't work. So you have these chokes in them. So anyhow, what I'm mainly after is the large transformer inside. So you can see I already took apart one. And my plan was to use this as the power supply for my hydrogen generator. Now I have gloves on here because th this stuff is covered in uh, pitch and s uh, not pitch um, tar, and it w it ruined my hands and I didn't want to get my camera dirty, so I put some gloves on. Anyhow, um, so I chiseled off all the tar. You can see all these globs of tar and stuff. But um, anyhow, so here's the transformer here, and here's all the um, uh, wire that was on the uh, secondary winding. I was going to use this for my hydrogen power supply, um, which I'm working on a video currently doing that. It might be out by now. Um, and I was going to use it, but when I tested the um, resistance on it with an ohm meter, um, I found that the coil was broken somewhere in here when I was taking it apart because I wasn't very careful with it. So I removed all the wire and counted every single um, turn on it and came up with um, about 400 and, or 1,430 turns on the secondary side. Now, we can divide, we can figure out how many turns are on the primary by taking 525 volts and dividing it by 120. And you get, come up with about 4.375. So you take um, the amount of turns that was on the uh, secondary, which was 1,430, and divide it by 4.375, and that will give you the number of turns on your um, primary. And it came up with about 330. 327 to be exact, but I'm just guesstimating they would have done an even number of 330. So anyhow, this now that we know that there's 330 turns there, we can do so much fun stuff with this. Um, so we could actually take thinner wire and re rewind the whole thing um, on the uh, secondary side and create um, a, like a 50,000 volt power supply or something. We can also um, remove this one and... Uh, to keep keep the secondary on a future one because I I do have four of these, and we can um, drop the amp uh, the voltage way down to like 1.5 volts at several uh, hundreds of amperes, and uh, get huge current power supplies, all sorts of fun stuff. So anyhow, um, since I've already done that, I'm just gonna basically show you how to tear this apart so you can get um, the components outside for yourself. So I'll be back as soon as I've removed the casing. To remove the casing. You can see there's, um, well, maybe there's better lighting on this side. Um, you can see there's like little clips down right there. Uh, there's just a little black clip. And that can be pried up with a chisel or something or a screwdriver. And then the whole back will just peel off. So first thing I'm going to do is peel off the back. Okay, so you can see that upon peeling off the back here, um, you can see that it was just these uh, little tabs here that I had to pry up to get the casing off. So there's uh, four of them on each corner. So upon prying that off, you can see there is a um, flap of uh, cardboard or something which reveals the, all the tar here and then the circuitry. So I'm gonna rip that off and then I'm gonna try to pry off the casing. Cause to get to all the circuitry and everything, this casing must come off. Now this is actually not too hard to do. There's a, uh, let's see if we can get better lighting, there's a flap here, and there's one on each side, and if we pry these open, we can actually uh, pry the whole wall up so it's like this, and we'll, we'll be able to pull out the whole tarry mess here. So I'm going to do that, and I'll be back in a moment. 
Okay, so you can see that we've removed the whole casing now, or by prying open all the sides. And um, now you're left with a sticky tar that you can see. So basically from now on, it's just your own call. You're going to just want to try to chisel off and pry off as much tar as possible without damaging this here. Uh, this is what I damaged last time, and this is the big um, transformer. If you damage the coils on it, um, you have to create your own, which is not exactly what we want, especially for what I'm doing with the hydrogen generator, because I'm trying to build a power supply for it. So we're going to rip off all this tar, um, and I'll be back as soon as I have all the components out. Uh, be careful of this capacitor, it might be charged if these were used recently. And it would give you quite the jolt and could, I don't know, maybe even kill you. I'm not sure uh, how much voltage it does charge up to though. So, just be wary. Anyhow, so I'm going to try to rip out as many uh, components as possible and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've been really careful with this, trying not to damage these coils here at all. And they're underneath this paper, so they should be pretty well protected. And I only accidentally uh, hit one with a hammer once, so it should hopefully be pretty good. Now, to get access to these coils, we have to get rid of this jumble of wires. So if you look at here, any of these fine little wires, those are the ones that are attached to the coils. So any of these bigger, bulkier ones, let's just chop right off. So we'll be back as soon as they're all gone, so we can take a better look. Okay, so now we need to lengthen these wires and make it into a usable transformer. So to do so, we're going to have to remove these sides right here. Now these just simply pry up right here with the screwdriver or something. You can prop them off and I believe these cores separate. Um, so anyhow, and then you can see all the little wires here. Um, so we'll, I'll be back as soon as I pried off the ends and separated the thing. Okay, so we have to be really careful removing these end caps because we'll need to put them back on later. And if you just take these words stuck on, so just take a chisel and pry them off gently. And uh, then the two sides will come off and then we have our core. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all this papery substance which is on top. So we can actually get access to the coils. So we'll be back in a moment. So you can see after prying open the one with all these little wires that were sticking out. You can see there's three coils. These are, believe, uh, th these are what I believe is the choke. And they are useless and don't really serve any purpose. So I'm just going to quickly unwind them and continue to remove the paper. Okay, so you can see with um, all the paper gone, you can see we have the primary coil and the secondary coil. But in the case of my hydrogen generator, this will be the primary and this will be the secondary because I wanted it to be a step-down transformer. Now, I can see why I messed up last time. This little wire here is the one lead from the uh, secondary, and here's the other. And this one is so small it could easily break off and be lost and you'd never get it because this one can't be pulled out any further. Unlike the, the rest of them, which I was able to increase to a reasonable length. So what we'll have to do is remove all of the um, coating on this one and solder on a separate wire. So let me quickly do that, and then I'll put it back together. So to put it back together, it's pretty simple. We're just going to come over here, grab our two chunks of iron here. And we just have to uh, put them back on. And when they're lined up back on, we can tap the end caps back on with a hammer. Okay, so I'm going to go quickly do that, and then I'll be back. Okay, so I also put some uh, paper down to uh, help insulate it from the thick iron core, and um, also a bit of hot glue just to hold the leads in place. You can see the leads go up quite a distance. So anyhow, that's basically how to rewire your transformer, um, or whatever. I, I just left this the same because I'm going to use this as the primary and this as the secondary to step down the voltage for my um, hydrogen generator. Um, but if you wanted to do this, as long as you have two transformers, you can take apart one, find out the turns on the primary, and then mess around with the turns on your secondary, or vice versa. And uh, you could get high amperage transformers or really high voltage transformers. And that first one which I messed up on and, and had to remove the whole first um, secondary coil on it, um, I'll actually probably rewind that with some nice fine wire and create a 50,000 volt uh, transformer or something from it. Oh, uh, that's my plans for that. Anyhow, now, I'm, I haven't tested this out yet, of course, and I will test it out in a moment to show you um, that it works. Um, and I did uh, test with an ohm meter, and the, all the uh, wiring, there's no shorts or anything, and it runs right through. There's a good connection. Anyhow, if you wanted to uh, cool this down faster, if it were to get hot or something, you could take the whole thing and uh, stick it in a case or something, dump a huge amount of oil in it, and um, pull a vacuum on it. 
if you have a vacuum pump or something. Even a refrigerator compressor used as a vacuum pump would work, and you, all you would need to do is take it out of an old refrigerator. And it looks like a big black thing with some copper pipe going out of it. And, you know, and if you were to suck all the oxygen out of it, it would suck all the oxygen out of these gaps, uh, leaving a vacuum there. And when you reintroduced um, air to it, all the oil would get sucked right in, and it would work excellent to cool everything down. And I might do that in the future, depending on if this thing gets hot or not. If it doesn't get hot, then there's no real need to. Anyhow, so I'm going to go ahead and hook this up, and we'll test it out. Okay, so I currently have it hooked up to the wall, and um, it appears to be doing really well. I felt it a moment ago when the power was off, and it's not warm at all after running for about 5 minutes or so. Um, although there is no amperage being drawn on it, so um, I would actually have to hook it up to my hydrogen generator to find out. Now, if we zoom in on the uh, uh, voltmeter here, you can see that we have about 26 volts. 25.9. So, this is like, excellent. Um, it works really, really well, and... Um, if I needed to uh, lower the voltage for some reason, I could always rewind a new one of these using um, less turns on the um, secondary, which was originally the primary from the fluorescent lights. Now, building a bridge rectifier for this is all you need to convert this to DC, and then voila, just like that, you have a simple power supply for your homemade hydrogen generator. Now, 25 volts is a bit too high, so I'm going to test it out, and if this is too much, then we can always uh, convert it down to less. Um, so anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and look in for future videos on how we can create like 50,000 volt um, transformers with this. Now, the reason that I'd like to use this as a microwave oven transformer for 50,000 volts is it's much larger than a microwave oven transformer. And for that reason, you can um, put way more windings on it. Because with the microwave oven transformer, if you were to do the same amount of windings on this thing, um, or like... It, it To create 50,000 volts, you would have, let's say, one winding on the primary, and then um, however many windings on the secondary, probably like 500, and that would bump it up to 50,000 volts. But the problem is, is one winding is way too few, and it'll melt out your transformer, and it'll get really hot and everything. With this, we have the option to put in several, several, several windings, because of um, how large the transformer is. So you do need a large transformer to do that. And so in a future video, I will definitely be doing that. So anyhow, I hope you guys enjoyed, and um, I'll see you in a future video. Okay, bye.